I got to ask you, um, since you mentioned TYT and AOC watching it, there was a moment in your book where you talk about how you know, someone working for Crowley's team, Lauren French, <laughs> um, yes. kind of brushed off something one of her friends said at a dinner. One of her friends was like, oh, there's a lot of enthusiasm about this uh, Alexandria Ocasio Cortez. What do you think about that? And French just brushed it off and said, she'll get 10% of the vote and a job at the Young Turks. Yes. So my question is, how is Lauren French doing? How's our home girl doing? What is she doing? What is she doing with her life? She said she was gonna uh, go into the private sector. She didn't. Oh, okay. um, yeah, actually she might have by now. Um, she went to work for uh, Ben Ray Lujan. You mm -hmm. know, the, uh, D, former D Triple C chair. Who shocking, shocking that she did that. Yeah. Uh, we, should, we could Google it. I, I haven't. I haven't. Well, we did Google her. her and we learned that she is obsessed with spear fishing. Oh, cool. One spear of her cool. I don't yeah. agree to disagree. <laughs> it's not my thing. I mean, I've never done it, but it <laughs> yeah, seems yeah. cool. I don't right? know. I, I've seen someone engage in it. I, I did not like it. Are you going to offer a job at the Young Turks? <laughs> I like, mean, we couldn't hire listen, AOC. Listen, Lauren, she, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> we might need someone to like. Provide examples of bad analysis to our audience. She, she so did, she we'll did miss that. One. She wasn't alone in missing that one. But yeah, she wasn't alone. But that was the weekend before the election. So that's oh, it's like amazing. It's amazing. Yeah, it's so delicious. Ten percent and a job at TYT. What what I loved about that comment was the elitist attitude um, and the unearned confidence that uh, you know elements of the establishment Democrats like they just display it here and there and they don't realize how much it turns people off, how much it turns voters right. off. Um, but anyway- Is it true, would you, would you guys have hired her? No, hell no, are you kidding <laughs> me? Like what, what use would she be here? Like yeah, she's we need- good on camera, I don't know. Mm, I, I don't know, I actually never heard of her until today, until, until I oh, read Oh, not that. Lauren, I meant AOC. Oh, AOC, no. If okay. she had lost. Um, Listen, you guys did hire Nina actually we did, a couple we years did. later. That's not a bad so point. So Lauren was like- <laughs> Yeah, no, I mean, look, yeah. but at that point, we hadn't hired any candidates right. who had run for office and didn't make it. So Lauren, like- Lauren was prescient. She, yeah. <laughs> what, what, com, what was communicated to me in that passage in your book is yeah. that they're paying attention to us. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they're paying attention to us, they're paying attention to our message. Mm -hmm. They can't stand us and I revel in it, I enjoy yeah. it, I love it. So. Um, shout out to uh, Lauren French. <laughs> All right, so we're running out of time, but I gotta ask you a few other things real quick about the behind the scenes drama that was going on with Justice Democrats. Because apparently AOC had some disagreements in regard to the fundraising necessary for her congressional run. Um, so Walid Shaheed <laughs> was uh, not so happy about her unwillingness to fundraise. And that actually led to a moment where it seems as though the Justice Democrats kind of abandoned her during her race. Or she she certainly felt that way. Mm -hmm. um, so there was this, <clears throat> right? And nobody likes, you know. I think it's actually kind of a feather in her cap to hate the fundraising. Mm -hmm. The people who like the fundraising tend to be psychos. Totally, I agree. <laughs> so, totally agree. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, the, the the exchange, the text exchange is it's like Walid is texting uh, AOC like, hey, uh, you're supposed to be doing call time today. Like, I don't see any call time in here. She's like, I I've been texting. You're like you can't. Text. That's not. That's not how it works. And, and she sends him a screenshot of somebody who gave two hundred fifty dollars over text. And well, he didn't know it, uh, but I learned later. Shortcut was like, you know who that was? That was that was my wife. That's amazing. <laughs> that gave that two hundred fifty dollars. And then she tweeted at that time. I went back and noticed it lined up with the day. She's like, you know, consultants. Like, why won't more working class people run for office? Also, consultants. You need to be on the phone eight hours a day and raise two hundred thousand dollars from your <gasps> close network of people. Terrible. Like, if you don't have a network of people who can open their wallets and give you a couple hundred thousand dollars, then you're a normal person, and they, and then you can't run. And then they wonder why there's no working class people. Um, so yeah. So uh, Justice Democrats at the end of December 2017 realizes like. Instead of 435 new members, we might get blanked and get zero. Mm. And so Walid and some others were making the pitch, we need to go all in just on AOC. Like mm. she's the one uh, that has the best shot to win with the resources that, that we have. Cori Bush ended up getting cut off. That's and right, yeah. To, and for good reason, like salty about it for a long time after that. Because a lot of promises were made. Mm -hmm. and. That promise is based on you know a hope and aspiration. It wasn't like they broke promises and stole money. It was like it just 
they, they thought they could build a national movement and get people enthusiastically donating like they did to Bernie Sanders. And that just didn't pan out. Mm -hmm. And so they had to narrow it down. But before they could finally make that decision, the word went out to all the candidates like, we're not going to be able to um, support you in the way that we thought we were. And wow. Rachel Lears, the, the documentary filmmaker, was finally remembers that like that week where she would contemplate, like, do I drop out? Like, wow. can, I, can I do this alone? Like, I, I only went into this because there was this support. And she decides to go for it. And then they turn around and they, and they come and they say, okay, we, we have decided we're going to be able to go in, like all in for you. Mm -hmm. And like Alexandra Rojas of Justice Democrats goes and runs the field. Troycott helps to helps the operations. Corbin helps do the press. And for the last like month to six weeks, they're all sleeping on couches and working twenty four seven with her with her current team um, across the finish line. Mm -hmm. And so, but for a moment there, she thought she definitely thought that it, that they had pulled the plug. Thanks for watching the video, guys. We also love it if you hit the join button below because that makes you a member. And members allow us to be independent, honest. We could be as progressive as we want, no corporate media influence. And that's all because of you guys. We love doing the show with our members. Hit the join button, become one of the Young Turks.